of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. He is worthy of the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. And it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So on this Palm Sunday, God, we glorify you. We thank you for your presence, God. We exalt your name as we get ready to worship in this place. Good morning, Kingsway. Good morning, Kingsway. Somebody put a smile on your face this morning and say, God is good. Somebody put a smile on your face this morning and say, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. So we get ready this morning to give you the worship, the honor, and the glory that is totally due your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your great name. Your great name is above every name, and we thank you, Father. Get ready to clap your hands with us this morning. Get ready to worship him. Oh, we honor you, Lord. Oh, we honor you, Lord.
Whether you're here in person or online, his presence is here, so worship him. Just worship him. God, we thank you. God, we adore you. God, we lift you up. 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 You're so worthy of this praise. You're so worthy of this praise. Somebody lift your worship and say something to your God in this place. His presence is here. His presence is here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Jesus. you would take over this place God we ask that you would take over this place God take over my mind God take over my thoughts God take over my family my children my work God my church our community if that's your prayer then say something to him in this moment because all we want is you Jesus all we need is you, Jesus. Just to worship him. Oh, you're so worthy, Lord. Take over this place. Take over this ministry, God. We place Kingsway Community Life Center in your hands, God. And we ask that you would use each and every one of us under the sound of my voice, God. Use us, God. Cause all we want is you. Take over, take over. Till we are consumed by nothing, nothing else but
Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him, yes. God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for what you've done and what you are continuing to do in the lives of your people, God. We thank you, God, that it is already done. That all we have to do is put our faith and our trust in you, Lord. Whether you're here in person or watching online, just make that your testimony this morning. Just give everything to God. He is more than capable of carrying what we cannot. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody clap your hands in this place. All over this place, just clap your hands. All over this place, just clap your hands and worship him. We thank you, God. stripes we are healed and why did I pull those two verses because this week we celebrate the most sacred time of our Christian faith of the way we celebrate we acknowledge we recognize the death burial and resurrection of that same God who shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God. This morning we worship him because he is wonderful. He's the counselor. He is the mighty God. Amen. Welcome to Kingsway Community Life Center where we simply love you. Love you back to life and destiny. It's safe here. There's healing in these walls. And this morning, we love you. Whether you are here, whether you are watching online, you're very much a part of us. I am a part of the online community. Some of us who live out of town, some of us who are abroad, some of us who are working right now and can't come into the sanctuary. We love you. We celebrate you. And I am going to take you through a small, quick exercise. I'm big on affirmations. And uh, well, I started to get big on affirmations. And this morning, that song, I was getting ready, a song came on my heart. And I'm not going to sing it, but we're going to say, <laughs> we're going to say it. Um, and you're going to say it with me. I didn't write it, but um, repeat after me. And this is you affirming yourself. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I, I look because I don't want to forget the words. <laughs> you it just slip in my head. Let's start again. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. And saved my life, sorry. You thought I was worth keeping. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. Monique, he thought I was to die for. He thought you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I can be healed. So I can be free. Can I be healed? So I can be saved. So I can be healed. I had I promise you I had it this morning. I promise you I had the words this morning. You know the song. The point I'm trying to make is that you are worth it. And I'm worth it. And we are worth it. Hold your head held high because this week, see, I have a couple degrees and I've studied and there are a lot of religions out there. There are a lot of philosophies out there. There are a lot of ways and, and thought patterns out there. But the way Christianity is the only one where God did it. I didn't have to, because I can't. I can't do all of the requirements 
on a good day I may be saved, fully saved on a good day but he did everything for me and I want him to affirm yourself and recognize those of us who have accepted this salvation recognize who you are in him and walk with the head held high, pastor told us last week that we have the power that we were made and this morning this morning he did it, so I celebrate you I celebrate us and I celebrate him today's Palm Sunday as I said um, welcome to Kingsway on uh, Monday mornings there's a glory in this house that doesn't end here we join Monday mornings at 6 o'clock for prayer um, on Zoom 6 a.m. for prayer on Tuesday nights we learn about this wonderful counselor this mighty God on Tuesday evening at 7 30 for Bible study again on Zoom and Friday mornings again we end our week prayer call on Zoom 6 a.m. now the information the website for all for sorry the Zoom link you can email admin at kcncministries.org and they will share the Zoom link with you you can share it amongst your friends you are more than welcome to join us for prayer and for Bible study on the specific times um, the greatest month of the year March y'all are okay January to February April to December y'all are good March people some of you want to get called out some don't listen <laughs> we had some birthdays this week well we had a birthday last week and we have another one coming up this week you know yourselves I had the names written um, but happy birthday happy celebration of your life your existence you are wonderful March people are wonderful everybody else is okay but March people are wonderful <laughs> and um yeah, I know Niasha, because Niasha just couldn't wait. She came a day before me, so her birthday is Saturday, and mine is Sunday. So I love on you, Niasha, and me. Um, this Friday, March 29th, is Good Friday. We will not be having in-house service next week. This Well, this coming Friday, we won't be having in-house service. However, we will still have the prayer call at 6 a.m., so join us. Um, next week Sunday is Resurrection Sunday oh, see? but Resurrection Sunday uh, March 31st join us as we celebrate we acknowledge the death because it's the death is the sacrifice we acknowledge the fact that he went into the grave because he took captivity captives and he did all of those things in the grave and we celebrate he rose up again that's the only thing you know Nobody came and called Jesus. Nobody came and, and resuscitated him. He got up out of that grave. And because he got up out of the grave, we are here where we are today. So we celebrate that next week, Sunday um, at 10 a.m. Please remember the weekly men's Bible study. Bible study, 845 on a Saturday. Gentlemen, let's, let's, I almost say let's come together. They're still not accepting me in men's ministry. I, I only have brothers, so I can relate. But yeah, for technical reasons, I'm not allowed in the men's ministry. But brothers, you are more than welcome to join 845 on a Saturday on the Zoom link. For those interested in the prison ministry, Brother Bevin is the person to contact. Please, we're still inviting persons to come and serve that community. And the next, or next baptism is on April 14th. We celebrate everyone who has made the step to get to, to, back, to get baptized and those of us who have not made the decision maybe on the fence or you're not sure take the step and I, I advise you I encourage you to take the step the journey of the way the journey walking with the Lord is an amazing journey and it's a very personal journey and it's a very beautiful journey so we celebrate and we encourage you to do that um, that's it for the announcements. This is now offering time. Um, again, this is not the only time. You are not restricted to this time to give your tithe and offerings or to sow in the ministry, but this is the time when we collectively give our tithe and our offering. So um, on this note, I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're going to make the declaration. 
we're going to pray about the offering, we're going to give our offering, whichever format we give it, whether it's through um, PayPal, through emailing at finance at kclzministries.org, there's a debit machine at the back, we also take cash um, with the envelopes at the back, whatever method you use to pay your tithe, give your tithe an offering and to sow, we accept it, we have thank you for it, this is good soil, and um, once we do that, we're going to meet and greet, and then I'll hand back over to Monique. So the declaration is, Lord, here I am sowing again. Not as a debt, but as a seed. I give because I have. And I have because I give. I boldly declare that blessings are on their way to me with more than what I need. The blessing shall not miss me, but it will arrive on time. So I sow into the kingdom, and I sow in Jesus' name. God, you who give seed to the sower, we thank you. I thank you for your provision. I thank you for resources. And Father, as we give up our capacity and give what we can, God, whatever level we are at giving, I trust you with the seed because we know you are good soil and this is good soil and you will take what we have and you will multiply just like the widow of Zarephath with that flour and that oil, God. She gave it and it's multiplied. Bless every household. Bless every family. Bless every person is sowing into the kingdom. Father, we thank you for not just a hundredfold, but a thousandfold return as we thank you in Jesus' name. Now somebody take this opportunity and greet somebody, give somebody a holy hug in this place. Hallelujah.
next 60 seconds and just glorify him. Just glorify him. Before we get ready to have Pastor Dennis come up here and give us a powerful word, just say something to your God in this moment. God, we thank you. We adore you. There's none like you. Get ready to receive the word of God. May it resonate within us. May we be able to take this word and use it in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, Pastor Dennis. Thank you, Lord. Can we bless the Lord today? Come on, guys, you can do better than that. That sounds like a big up for me. <laughs> can we bless the Lord today in the house of God? I thought I was at Kingsway. Bless the Lord. I want you to just grab the hands of the person next to you. Even when our spiritual father is not here, I believe that things should operate the same. And this is always and still will be a praying house. Bless the Lord. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Squeeze it tight. Let them know it's not a dead person holding them. There's somebody with life. Bless the Lord. Let's lift our prayers for our brothers and sisters before we receive the word of the day. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, because you have made us and not we ourselves. If we could have made ourselves, oh Lord God, there could have been so much problems. But you fashioned me. You made me, dear Lord God. And I thank you for that. And today is a blessed day. It's a victory day, dear Lord. And we're about to hear something that's going to activate every good and perfect thing you placed in us. Bless your people indeed, O oh Lord God. Let your word convert their soul. Let it convert their minds. We pray when it's all said and done, you will get the glory. You will get the praise. We will join with David when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because good things happen there. So we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor again in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Bless the Lord. It's pretty nice using pastor's device. I just said, you know what? He's not here. Let me try this thing. I know he has some spies in here. Nobody don't tell him nothing. Don't tell him nothing. I know he, he's watching it online. <laughs> you know dad watches it online. Bless the Lord. But today we want to, I want to share a little thought from us that we've been going through a series in our Bible studies. We've been doing a series that reflects and impacts our life according to what we've declared this season to be, and that is the year of advancement. So we decided to do a series on intentional living. Intentional living. So we've been doing this series on intentional. You can continue play, sir. It kind of sounds good, Brian. You can play a little bit more. Yeah, man, that's five more minutes. So we decided to do this series on intentional living. And I've always said to myself, I always hear Pastor Brown say, because you guys don't come out to Bible study. Well, as of today, the actual Bible study teacher is going to come today <laughs> and bring Bible study. Bless the Lord. So I want us to open our Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 and 9. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. As you know, it's customary in King's Way to use the New King James Version. That's the Lord. So just follow along as I read it. And when you have found it, just say amen. amen. And above all the things I say, one truth you guys will know. I will always say from the beginning, it is the truth. And that is, I won't be long before you. <laughs> I will not be long before you. But Philippians 4, verses 4 and 9 reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Just bow your heads. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray again it will be, perf it will be perfect in converting your believers' souls. I thank you for this, and I give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, bless the Lord. Today we're going to talk about a topic, what I call the panic room. 
the panic room. Now, the terminology, the panic room, is a house. When you have a house, there's a room, which what they would either call a panic room or a safe room. It's a room that you have in your house in case that there's a burglar or if there's anything that, is, that could be hazardous to you. It's a place that you go to for safety. So if, so, so if a burglar comes in, it's a room that all the occupants of the house know. They know it's there. They know how to access that space. It's something that is designed for your safety, the panic room. I want to, all of us as believers to know that God has instituted and constructed a panic room for us. Now, ultimately, if I wanted to start from the beginning and just name the end, it's basically prayer. If you follow the text, we could come up with our own strategies to, 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 to come against, you know, anxieties and challenges. And in our series for um, intentional living, we talked about some things that we wanted to be intentional about in this season so that we could advance. So panic room is part of a subtopic that we're talking about intentional living called emotional intelligence. I learned that was important because you can't just say whatever you want and tell somebody sorry. You have to get older now and know that's not right. And emotional intelligence means, though some people don't believe it exists, it means that I know how to govern myself emotionally and also be able to ascertain, not perfectly, but enough of another person's emotions so that we can have healthy relationships. It's not every time we say things is supposed to hurt. Emotional intelligence is important. When I recognize this, I recognize there's certain environments that are not healthy for the type of person I am. For the type of person I am. The Bible said you're liking on to trees, right? Because you have to be fruitful. But remember this, because you're liking on a tree, don't be naive. You don't grow any, everywhere. You could be called an evergreen. Go to Jamaica and try to be an evergreen. You could call yourself a cactus all you want. Don't need water. You could survive anywhere. Come to Canada and try to be a cactus. Does anybody plant stuff in their backyard? You know that there's certain things you can't even plant because the time period doesn't last that long for it to grow. That's why I always do spinach. It grows everywhere. <laughs> Don't have to plant it again. It just keeps on coming. It keeps on coming. So we have to be very mindful of our environments and those things that are around us and the people that are around us. I have a wonderful mentor, a great pastor, I recognize, because I, I embrace this concept of emotional intelligence, there are some things that get my pastor upset. So therefore, if he has to respond to it, I still have to bring him the issue. Now, I need an answer. So therefore, I can't lack wisdom in bringing the issue to him, though the issue is still his business. We have to be very tactful. I recognize if I'd known these principles when I was younger and I had to bring things to my mom, I would have gotten less trouble. Eh? I would say beaten, but I would just say less trouble. Just because I was mindful on how I brought things and how I carried myself. What we need to do is very, be very intentional with our emotions these days. Why? Because the emotions, sometimes if you don't put it in its place, it will take the position of the Holy Spirit. This is why sometimes we pray more emotionally than more spirit-led. How many times you pray and it's all emotion flying up and it's nothing what the Holy Spirit ever gave you. You just know how you feel. 100% sure of how you feel. And some of us don't give a bag of chips if we know if how we feel is 100% right. This is why we, before we process emotions, you process information. When something comes your way, hear the information first. I beg, hear the information first before you start making your emotions go all over the place. When you start your car and you're revving, you don't start driving. You wait for it to dial down a bit, don't you, right? When you jump in your car and you're ready to go somewhere, you determine where you're going to go, don't you? You don't just wait 15, 10 minutes driving and then say, okay, now I'm going to start. I know where I want to go. I'm going to start going. You don't do that. But I promise you, if you go in every situation, emotions first, that is what you're doing. For all my West Indian people, you turn on the oil. You're ready to fry some plantain. When it's too hot, you just drop the plantain in there? No. You wait for it to dial down. So in every other platform in your life, you do this. 
So why are you picking and choosing certain times to do this? Learning to take in information, dial it down back. If the emotion is water, let the water take the shape of the bottle, and you'll be fine. This is not something you do easily. Because sometimes it is your heart that's getting overwhelmed. And David put it best. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead me to a rock that is higher than myself. You notice David said to lead me there because you don't go there on your own. Sometimes this type of help, some of us don't even admit to that we need it. Sometimes you don't even have haters. You don't have people bothering you. It's you just not getting your emotions in check. And now it's become an infirmity to you. And the Bible said that Jesus heals all the infirmities. But remember, an infirmity by definition is the weakness that caused me not to get my desired goal. That is what an infirmity is. I could have gone there, but I can't walk. I wanted to see this beautiful painting, but I don't have eyes to see. Don't allow your emotions to be the thing that causes you not to get the goal that you want to have. This is intentional living. And I recognize I can't be like Moses at certain stages in his life making emotional decisions. It was an emotional decision to go kill that soldier. And you know it's the same frustration and emotional decision that got him kicked out of Egypt. Don't look at me naive. Egypt was a good place for him. It was financially secure. It was secularly good but not spiritually good. Secular just means outside of church. Joseph had a secular call to government. He wasn't called to preach. Sometimes the only secular thing is bad, I feel, is just music. There's certain things that are not in the church, but God still calls you to go and do. Because the kingdom needs to go there. And we have to be sure of ourselves when he sends us there. Moses, with the same frustration that got him kicked out of Egypt, was it not the same frustration that did not make him see the promised land? And then we call it, oh, I'm going through a bad season. You're not going through a bad season. We call this on earth. We call those cycles. You need to master this thing and stop the cycle. The same frustration got you kicked out of Egypt. Now the same frustration didn't make you see the promised land. As believers, we're not people that ought to be overwhelmed so easy. And if you believe that, say amen. You're not supposed to. This is why when Moses saw the burning bush, it wasn't a mystery. It wasn't amazing, if you really be, think about it, to see a bush burning in the wilderness. You could get that in Canada with natural fire. The problem was the bush wasn't consumed. And that goes to tell me something. If I could see a natural fire in Canada just from the normal sun in this weather in the woods, there's nothing so big about it happening in that hot desert. But to see it not consumed, it tells me the miracle and the what's the difference between the miracle and the common thing. Seeing the thing overwhelmed and consumed is common. Everybody has problems. And your problem may not be as unique as you think. It's just that some people don't share their business. You'll be very much surprised. Your problems and your situations are common. But what's the miracle? Was that the bush wasn't consumed. Oh, if we ever believe that God has truly put a treasure in our earthen vessels. That we could be perplexed on every side and not be destroyed. We could be cast down and not defeated. Moses saw his ministry and the type of temperament God wanted him to have in that burning bush. I need you to be an individual that when you are overwhelmed, you are not overconsumed. You have to govern your emotions. Your brain interprets for you your five senses. My sight, my hearing, my touch, my taste. We'll soon get somewhere. Don't worry, I got to lay the foundation. But it is my heart that's going to tell me if I'm going to have a good or a bad day. Remember, Proverbs says, guard your heart with all diligence, because from it, are the, notice he says, from it, not the issues of your life comes into your heart. Learn to believe the Bible and listen, stop listening to other people. Your heart sends the issue. So when I, my brain checks my senses, I get a flat tire. My brain registers I have a flat tire. Okay. 
but it's my heart that's going to tell me if I have a bad day. Because it's my heart that, that determines my emotions. My heart is the place where my emotions, I get anger here. I sense love here. It's not here. There's no transcendence in your mind. You can't even make, trust your mind sometimes to make a loving decision. It's going to be all practical and rational. And that's its job. That's what God has designed it to do. There's jobs for Monique to do. There's jobs for me to do. But in the different jobs, God always works it out that everything works harmoniously together. The brain has its job. My heart has its job. So my heart will look what has to tell me if I'm having a bad day or it's just something that just happened and I can fix it and I'm going to move on. That's what the Bible tells us to guard our hearts. Because from it flows the issue of life. Look at your life right now. It's not a reflection of your education. It's a reflection of your heart. It's not a reflection of any favor. It's a reflection of your heart. It's a reflection of your heart. This is why when you see people and you feel, let's be go-getters, let's push, and let's be, oh, they're not being outstanding. They're not trying to pursue for greatness. No, they're content. Because they recognize what is necessary to keep their heart healthy. They're not trying to chase the Joneses with everybody. I'm not doing that. I'm a pastor. I have people to lead. I don't have people to entertain. It's a different story. This is the year of intentional living and an advancement. I'm looking at what I'm doing. I'm recognizing what God wants me to do in this season of my life. He's telling me to just watch. I said, God, what am I supposed to do? Watch. I said, God, that sounds lazy. <laughs> that don't sound like me. I want you to watch. Observe. And you know who he's telling me to watch and to observe and, to, and why? That is the season I'm in. And I'm intentional about it. So in terms of intentional living, we also have to consider our emotions as well. Because wherever God is taking you, your emotions are going to go there with you. And what I'm tired of seeing God bringing people into beautiful places, great places, but they themselves are not good. And they abort that wonderful blessing in place. Here we're looking in a season in Paul's life where he's dealing with the church in Philippi. Under the same situations, they had three problems. Philippi had three problems. They had a problem with, um, with adversity. Adversity. They had challenges with the faith. You know in these days, when you're a Christian, you're going to have problems. They're going to come after you. And I'm not talking about they're going to block you and not like you on social media. We're talking about those days where persecution was real persecution. Not the funny stuff we're calling it today. They block me. I'm going through persecution. They're not liking my photos. I'm being persecuted. No, 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 no. They had persecution. The second problem that they had was ill doctrine coming in. There's three problems. Three problems. Persecution was for their safety. Doctrinal things was something that could impact their mind. They will live life confused. I'm, look, I'm listening to all these problems because we're, sec we're trying to understand why Paul said prayer fix all of these things. All of these things. Has anybody ever been confused in your life? Prayer clears your mind for that. Have you ever been persecuted? Tribulations come from life. Persecution comes from a person. Persecution comes from a person. When somebody has it in for you. And believe you, when somebody says they have something for you, it's not always a gift, but trust me, they have something for you. They also went through a, a problem with Jewish, Jew, Jewish people coming in and believing because they're Gentiles they should follow with the Jews end of the faith and that they need to be circumcised imagine walking up to grown men saying now that you love Jesus now it's time to be circumcised remember in all this thing Paul keeps his composure why? because he's in prison this is a prison epistle. Paul is literally in prison. He's exercising these emotional intelligence, understanding that right now it's not about me. I do appreciate the offering you guys sent me and everything, but I'm hearing these issues about you guys. And the one thing that he utilizes for us to know that how we could govern our emotions and keep from anxiety is prayer. One thing, the first thing he says, he says rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoicing in the Lord reminds me of the goodness of God. 
And sometimes I get between a rock and a hard place. I always remember the goodness of God. This is why David says that thy rod and my staff comforts me. When he look at the rod and the staff of the shepherd, it tells his story. He looks at his staff. He recognizes the journey he's been through and he looks at his staff. It's encouraging to know that when I'm going through a hard time now, there are some things that is visible in my life that I could see, I could see that God is greater than them. The rod. Then the staff. The staff is used to fight. The amount of battles the shepherd probably fought. And he saw sometimes teeth in his, in his staff. Chipped away. Dented. From all the battles. It's encouraging. And when we rejoice in the Lord, it's the same way as us looking back at our rod and our staff. When I worship, I'm reminded of the goodness of God. And sometimes it's all about keeping your mind at the right place as a believer. Always rejoicing. Always, again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known unto all men. One of the big things he tells us is to remember that the Lord is at hand. Do you know what that means? That means that God is about to move. When the Lord is at hand, it means that God is about to move. When we hear about the hand of God, sometimes we always think about it's his wrath. But it can't be the Lord is about to move with the hand of God for my wrath because of my sin. Why? When Jesus dealt with that on the cross. He dealt with it on the cross. God is not moving back from me because I made a mistake. Why? Didn't he do that to Jesus when he was on the cross? If he did it for him, why is there any reason would he do that for me? To, the, to do that to me. Paul is trying to comfort the sins because they're being persecuted and they're worried about error. The scripture don't say that. Historical writing shows us they were worried about error. So Paul is trying to tell them, calm down. Relax. Rejoice always. Remember that the Lord is at hand. That tells me whatever that is bothering you, whatever that is building up anxiety or worry, you have to remember that the Lord is at hand. He's about to move. I always remember when I look at those little pictures and you see a man trying to dig through somewhere. And then it looked like it took too long and he's right there at the brink of it. And then he just drops his thing and walks away. That's how some of us are sometimes. We don't know that the Lord is about to move. And just because it's not according to your timing. And if you and I will openly tell you, if you're not rejoicing in the Lord always, you're not, your eyes are not open to see when he's about to move. This is where worship is so critical in this season in time. Because when I worship, it brings me near to God and I'm sensitive to him now. Many times I was able to pick out God in certain places where I shouldn't have. Every believer here today would never follow astrology. They think that's demonic. I think so too. But I promise you this. If you had that mentality back then, you would never have followed a star to go find Jesus, would you? It would not look like God. But when you read the Bible, God was in it. So my problem is, why is it that we have church but not Jesus? Because you can't have anxiety and worry it. And have Jesus. According to the Bible, nobody could have even died when Jesus was in the room. <laughs> How do we have worry and trouble? This is something Paul is telling us that we need to grab a hold of. Because trouble will happen all the time. And we need to accept that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God has delivered us from them all. All we need to do is remember that the Lord is at hand. And this is not an opinion that Paul gave. It's a commandment. He said, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. If there's one thing we need to be intentional about in this season is that I don't worry. I don't have no problems. And I'll live my life to make sure I don't worry. So that means I'm making sure I'm good with my money. I'm good with my time. Because worrying is a jacket that don't look good on Pastor Dennis. I'm already graying up as it is. I'm already graying up as it is. That's what I learned. I'm not doing it no more. And this is a command by God. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything. Don't give undue attention to certain things. I always tell my children, if you're worrying about this, sometimes Liam likes to take on things. Liam worries a lot sometimes. I always say, Liam, if you're worrying about this, you're trying to tell me that you want to be dad. Do you want to be dad? He's like, 
Is it fun being that? I said, sometimes it's not. <laughs> sometimes it's not. But sometimes we're like that. We take on problems. We try to worry about things. And I've learned in my life, I don't worry about things that God said he's going to do. Not even in the natural realm. Maybe, maybe you can do a confession with everybody in staff. I don't even worry about stuff that you guys say you're going to do. If you're going to do it, I trust you to do it. When there's a problem, you will come to me. I will act accordingly to be there. Other than that, I don't worry over things that people said they're going to do. And if I'm that type of person, how much more do you think I'm going to do with God if God said he's going to do a thing? Don't be anxious for anything. Even in this year of advancement, where are you running going? God's going to accelerate you anyway. Take your time. Why are you rushing things that, that you don't even probably wouldn't even know if you're running, leaving God? Because <laughs> I know as believers, sometimes we think that God is moving too slow. But Paul was telling these people, despite what you're going through, don't be anxious for anything. Don't allow fear to dictate who you need to be. Because that's what anxiety is, a form of fear. And imagine that the panic, or what we just need to remind everybody is that you have a panic room to run to. You have a place that you can run to when you have problems. There's a place that you could go. Now this is when it becomes hard because prayer is never easy. People who do pray will know it's never easy to really pierce beyond the veil. Nothing about getting revelation from God sound or looked easy. Not even in scripture. Don't look at me like Moses climbed a mountain. Let me see you climb mountain. Some of us sometimes fight to climb stairs. Nobody's going downstairs. Eh? <laughs> Too much stairs. But Moses climbed a mountain. That's some truth to swallow now. That's some truth to swallow, to get revelation. What kind of courage did Esther have to conjure up? If I perish, I'll perish. What's this thing about prayer that we think it's easy? Because we think communication is just getting it off our chest, don't we? You don't know it's about getting it in the other person. You thought communication is just as long as I said it, I communicated. You need to practice the art of getting your words into other people. This is why both of us could speak English and still have a failure to communicate. And I've learned these things. I recognize how I deal with things emotionally matters. As a believer, it matters. Church hurt. The most church hurt I probably recognize that happened to people came from people who did not acknowledge emotional intelligence, said anything they want to from up here and from down there, and did not know God did not even require them to say certain things the way they did. Or deal with people the way they do. I've just grown now. I'm in my 40s. You all know that sorry doesn't always slice the pizza. And as believers, more is expected. This is a level of discernment. That actually the Holy Spirit actually aids us in. Does anybody, everybody know that discernment is also a gift? We don't care about how other people feel. You better watch yourself. How much times was Moses kicked out of a good situation because of his anger? And, how, and why, who wants that to happen to them? Many of us are like the centurion, but it's not, Lord, help me with my unbelief. What is the thing that God, you need Jesus to help you with? Could have got the job, but my anger got the best of me again. Great person, dated she saw a side of me that, what, that she, wasn't, she wasn't really fancy about. We have problems. We have issues. But Paul tells us in our panic room on how to deal with it. He says us in prayer and in supplication. Prayer and supplication. It sounds the same, but it's different. Prayer is broad. There's many ways and stances of prayer. You could pray with. You could pray for. You could pray through. You could even pray around. You could pray against. There's different stances in prayer. That's a broad thing. Supplication is specific. When it says to do prayer of supplication, it's telling you to be specific in your prayer. This is when we have to dismiss the emotion. You can't be splashing, dashing recklessly when you're praying. 
if you go before a governor or some prominent person, you are not going to make sure you know what you're saying when you stand in front of them? How much more is God? So God is telling us the real remedy for these things, you have to be pacific. That's what supplication means. It's not, oh God, why? Help me. Help you with what? What do you want God to do? Fix it or give you the strategy? Because remember when he says, remember not the former things, I'm going to do a new thing. He wasn't talking about a huge difference. But what he was really talking about was Israel was accustomed to Egypt bondage. They were in Babylonian bondage now. So Egypt bondage means when, when we need to walk through the water, God opened the sea for us. And we honky-dory just walk right through. God, we're hungry. What does he do? Let food from the sky and we eat freely. God says, no, this is not Babylonian bondage. You're going to go in the wilderness, but I'm going to make a way for you. You're going to go into dry places, I'll give water. It means that you're going to have to go through things, and your solace has to be that God is with you. You're not going to be exempt from things. So yes, Daniel, you have to go into the lion's den. And your only solace is that I am with you. Yes, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was real gangster standing up for me. But you know what? You're going to still go in that fiery furnace. Yeah, there's no opening of it. You're going to have to go through it. And that is the new thing God is doing. So we recognize that in this dispensation, God is telling us we have to go through things. Or else we don't know God as a delivering God. I would not know God could heal if I wasn't sick. I didn't know that God could provide it. So one day, I missed, an insurance, I missed two auto insurance payments. Two of them. It came up to, it was high. My insurance was bad. <laughs> I went to go minister. I, I could have went to work where I could have got a better pay to make up that money. But I, somebody called me to speak. It was a small church. And I went to go speak there instead. I don't know. At that time, I thought I was being stupid. But looking back, I was kind of smart. <laughs> I went there and I ministered. They didn't have nothing to give me, I promise you. By the time I walked down off the podium, grabbed my wife, said, okay, we're going to go. By the time I walked to the door, I promise you, I'm saying it up here, $600 came to me from different people. If I didn't have a lack, I would not know. This is why sometimes I say certain things and nobody could fool me or tell me otherwise. He's been that good and real to me. Real to me. Real to me. Real to, but you have to make your prayer pacific. Why? Because the things that overwhelm you are pacific things. There are actual things that trigger you. Therefore, you have to bring those specific things to God. Don't pray for say, God, help me with these kids. That's one of my favorite prayers, God, help me with these kids. <laughs> my gosh, even when I know Toya's out the house too, God, help me with these kids. <laughs> I'm the man in my house and sometimes I call it, they listen to her, boy, they mean... <laughs> Oh, because she feeds them. <laughs> they don't know that I bring the food in, <laughs> but I don't get credit for it. <laughs> but we need to be pacific, brothers and sisters, when we pray. This is something I want us to know so that we don't get anxious. This is a form of intentional living. We wake up and we know that emotionally I got to be sound so that I can take criticism. Hello, people. You got to be able to take criticism. And if you're not emotionally sound, how could you take it? Constructive criticism too. It's not every time somebody's going to say nice to you. And not every time somebody says something rough to you, it's going to do you detriment if you're mental, emotionally healthy. That's why we can say Buckley's don't taste good, but it works. Cerisee don't taste good, but it cleans your blood. It works. You have too much pimples on your face, drink some Cerisee. Clean out that blood. It don't taste good, but it works. You have a panic room. You don't have to utilize social media. You don't have to. You don't have to tell millions of people. I know it's an old church song, but it says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless cares we bear. All because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. It's in your Bible. I'll challenge you. Google it and find it. God was actually upset with his people because they had problems and they didn't bring it to him. You find a friend that would tell you that I'm upset because you had a problem. You didn't bring it to you. 
Usually when you call them, they see your name and number on the phone. Like, huh? What does pastor want now? <laughs> no. These people had issues. They had problems. But Paul showed them that they have a panic room. And that the peace of God will reign in their hearts. And I want to tell you about the little phases of peace here. There is the peace of God. That means it's not yours. It's not your peace. It's not something that derived from you. So therefore, you have to tap into God to get it. It's like the fruit of the Spirit. It's not your fruit. It comes from God. And then there's the peace from God. It's of God and it's from God, meaning that God is the giver of this peace. Don't think you're going to get this level of peace outside of being saved. And I'm sorry, I'm a type of pastor that just says it straight like that. There are some blessings and there are some good things from God. But there's some benefits you get from being his child. When you're the pastor, you have to understand, everybody is family to you. Everybody. I love every child here. And if I get emotional, I say, you guys know I love you guys. But uh, at the end of the day, you have to remember, when you're a son and when you're a daughter, there's, there, there's certain benevolences you get. That is the benefit of the believer. We can look to God and say, Abba, Father. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can do that. Though they, we all acknowledge and love God. And God loves you too. But only, only a few are his children. So we have the peace from God. But because we are his children, we have peace with God. And because we have peace with God, I have peace within myself. I have peace within myself. Let us be intentional in this area of living. Being emotionally sound. Being emotionally intelligent. I already know you're spiritual. I already know you're filled with the Holy Ghost. I already know that you love the Lord. But how do you handle your frustrations, David? How do you handle... You could be as strong and as powerful as Elijah. That all of a sudden Jezebel says one thing, you're cowering in a cave. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Do you believe in God or what? Do you believe that Jesus has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness? Yes or no? If you believe so, then there shouldn't be no war. If there's a bad report, the Bible even tells us to go in this same text and go pray about it about it and instead of thinking of bad and negative things the Bible tells us in closing on what we need to think about and what's more important for many for all of us finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are good report if there is any virtue if there's anything praiseworthy meditate on these things govern your mind well you need to control it control your thinking controlling your thinking will also help you to control your speech because words are just expressed thoughts but you have to understand that when you think right you become a great person and a better person why because the bible says whatever a man thinketh so is he you see how everything starts from this place right here and ventures out everywhere else so my admonition for everybody today, for you to, for your spirit to stay healthy and for your heart to stay good, govern your emotions. I think Pastor Brown puts it best. It's life is like a car and you have your emotions. It's in the vehicle because it's a part of you, but it's not supposed to have the driver's seat. It's not supposed to. See, you, you from downtown, you know he preached that sermon. You're not supposed to put it in the driver's seat. Well, actually, Jesus is in the driver's seat. You are in the passenger. Yes. Your emotions are there, but it doesn't get the driver's seat. Never allow the devil to manipulate emotions. He can't come after your spirit. Because that is of God. We can't go deep into it like Bible study today, because it's preaching. But you, he can't touch your spirit, because that's God. But your emotions. Please stand with me. Your emotions, he would come after. Anything that needs to be put under subjection will always have a feminine tense. It's not that it's anything chauvinistic, but that's just how things are written. 
So even David was a man. He even said, my soul will make, not his, her boast in the Lord. Now your soul is where your emotions, your mind, the I do what I feel like resides. That's the you. And that's the feminine tense. Now, I'm not saying anything about any gender. I mean, like, that's what God desires to be put under subjection. The emotion, the soul. But under what? His spirit. His spirit. So we don't pray soul-ish prayers. It could start off like that, but usually how the spiritual technology works, the Holy Spirit gradually kicks in and begins to give, lead us in our prayer. That's how it works. That's how we obtain the panic room. And whenever our life gets out of sorts, we pray, gather ourselves, and we go back out rejuvenated. But we need to, as the Bible puts it, guard our hearts, maintain our emotions. Why? Because that's when the devil comes after. In the Garden of Eden, there was Eve. What gender is Eve? She. What tense? Feminine. Adam is a man. The new man represents spirit. When that is sleeping and the enemy goes after soul, we recognize that soul can easily manipulate spirit. That's why emotionally it, gov it takes your spirit on a roller coaster. Because we tend to listen to soul more than spirit because we know it more. We knew it from when we were a baby. The Spirit of God is the baby in us because you only recognize it, not from birth, but from when you're born again. How old were you when you were born again from when you were born? This is why we gravitate to soul more. But the Bible is telling us that we need to guard that. We need to make sure that is sound because the devil will always come after your soul to manipulate your spirit. I'm not going to try to go deep in it on a Sunday morning. But this is what I want us to know. If you have a suit, you don't take the pants and put it in the laundry machine and take the jacket to the cleaner. It will look unbalanced. So if you have a body, you want to keep it balanced. You make sure they get the same information. That's why most preachers say, if you don't come out to Bible study, I'm going to have to give it to you here. Because you can't walk around with a suit with the upper part from the laundry machine and the bottom from the cleaners. Do you not see that the black suit will look colored, the color will look different? We don't want the congregation to be different. So this is why you get it here. The unfortunate thing, you can't go as deep as the certain topic, but we need to govern our spirit. We need to govern our soul, I should say. Guard your heart from all diligence, because from it will flow the issues of your life. Everything that's going on in your life right now, it's not the bad that it's happening. What's bad is, is how your heart is interpreting it. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're not the first one. And you promise me you won't be the last. But God delivers us from them all. What I want to do is make a prayer, an altar call because I want to pray with everybody that does not know that they have a prayer panic room. Watch this. You know about prayer. You didn't know it was supposed to be used for that. You know about tongues. You didn't know it was, used to, it was supposed to be used for that. You didn't even know that there was a space that God gives us. Remember that song, Louis? There is a place of quiet rest, and it's near to the heart of God. That's your panic room. Consider, raise your hand if you're going through some issues today. Everybody has problems. Remember the burning bush. Having problems is not uncommon. Being able to have problems and not be consumed, that's the miracle that God is showing us to live today. Because sometimes he'll make you go through those problems because your nephew's watching you, your aunt is watching you, loved ones are watching you, seeing how you will stand according to the problem. And this is why your life is an epistle to other people to read. They know you spiritually. They know you, you go to church. But emotionally, are you good? Because that is the true results of a God that keeps the storms on the inside of you good. Good. Now, if everybody has a problem, what I want us to do, even before we close, this is not really an altar call, but I want, to, I want you guys to learn how to bring your problems to God. We know we have to, but how do we do it? 
how we do it. The Bible tells us a lot of things. Judge not, or you be judged by the same measure that you be judged. If you really study the text, he's telling you not, he's not telling you not to judge. He's telling you how to judge. You don't put on anybody more than what you cannot exhibit. Because you're not God. So he's not telling us not to judge. He's telling you how to do it in the right manner. So if you can't fast for three days, don't tell people they need to do it. Save that for somebody else who can. That way the message is good because it's being done from a proper messenger. That's how the kingdom works. You don't just do what you feel like. You don't do what you just feel like. I want us to be able to know this prayer, this panic room. Families need it. Loved ones need it. Individuals need it. Some of us are fighting with low self-esteem. And many of us lack this, this, this emotional intelligence, or probably even better because we're in church, discernment to even give it that person a time of day. But the devil's a liar today. Today you're going to be a church member. Today we're going to pray for our brothers and sisters. And can we do that before we leave? Are you guys hungry to go eat oxtail rice and peas? I know I am too, Ian. Don't worry. I just said it as a cliche. I am too. <laughs> I am too. But if anybody, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I want to call you to this altar. And if you're there watching us online, we just want to let you know we're going to pray for you today if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're calling you to the altar. We want to pray with you. Bless the Lord. If everything's all good, I want everybody just to lift your hands. And I'm going to pray a prayer. And I'm praying that the prayer mantle, a certain particular prayer mantle will come upon you guys. A mantle that will be able to pray and get results. A mantle that will discipline you. That when your heart is overwhelmed, you will go to that panic room and you won't go nowhere else. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, because I love my spiritual family. I thank you, Lord God, because you've given me people, Father God, that we all love each other and desire to see each other win. We pray, dear Lord God, that you will calm the storms that's within every heart and mind of every believer. We pray that we will be mindful, dear Lord God, of what you have given unto us. And that is the power of prayer. Prayer to change. Prayer, dear Lord God, to loose. Prayer to set free, dear Lord God. Prayer to bless, oh Lord God. Prayer to bind. You have given us a room, O oh Lord God, a, a, an immaterial place, and that is prayer, that we can govern our lives effectively. I pray for every child of yours that is in here, Lord God, that they will take on the prayer mantle and anything that is overwhelming their hearts. Father God, I believe right now, dear Lord God, as Moses told the children of Israel, take a good look at these Egyptians, because from this day forth, we will not see them anymore. Because we've learned to pray. We, we learned where to pray. And we learned how to pray. We won't be anxious for anything. In all things, we will pray and be pacific with the prayers. Father God, we, we, we will be pacific. And I thank you for this. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, family. Bless the Lord. Let's just raise our hands. Bless the Lord. Now let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in God's sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you guys. Happy birthday to all the birthday people in March. Hope you guys enjoy.